What's up guys, King Roar here back with another video and in today's video this is going to be an in-depth tutorial on how to make skins for War Thunder. Now I do have a more basic tutorial and I'll leave the links below and in cards on the screen but if you want a more in-depth tutorial this is the one for you. So to begin you're going to want a few things, you're going to want a photo manipulation software like GIMP or Photoshop, we'll be using Photoshop in this example video. You will also need War Thunder, of course, and maybe the SDK. The SDK is very important, but it's not necessary for what we're going to do. Anyway, so the first thing we're going to do is come into our SDK. Now, this is just where we get the skin files from. So you're going to want to go to Root, Game Res. You're going to want to find the Aircross folder. And here you go. So you're going to choose the country you want to make a plane for. So we're going to do Germany. You're going to want to find the country folder air bq not the air c folder just the air folder so ger is germany usa is uh, so on so we're going to go to here and we're going to find the plane that we're making the skin for so we're doing a 109 f4 here we go here's the f4 so this is what we're making a skin for now you can do this without the sdk you can just go into the game generate the skin folder in game but some planes don't come with the n files the lighting files so if you want to make a skin for a plane you don't have or you want the end files for a plane that didn't come with them the SDK is the place for you so you, you can see we have the normal texture here we have the damage texture we have the N and the N damage now I already have the A and the A damage for the 109 F4 so I'm just going to download or export the N files so I'm going to have to export this now after doing this as you can see, the game creates TGA files and the SDK will create DDS files. Now, it doesn't matter if you have them two different, it's best to have all the same, but it doesn't matter if you have different things. All you have to do to make sure the game reads each one is come into your BLK. Okay, so as you can see, the game only generates the texture files for this, this aircraft. So we're going to have to add the end files that the game wants to read. So basically, all you're going to have to do is copy this block of text here enter it down two spaces and then paste okay so everything can stay the same but you need to choose the from and then copy the first one so rename copy the name of this and then paste it here and do the same here paste here and then just change this ending to whether you have a DDS file or a TGA file and then we're going to do this one more time but for the damage version so rename this copy this put this in the first bit here make sure it's within the brackets and you keep the star paste here and here and file save that now we should have the uh, the lighting files so once we have all the files we need we're going to open up our files on the on the photo editor so as you can see I've already started here this is just a reference image I have but as you can see I've already started here so I start doing the boy lines rivets and everything so if we just we just get rid of this this is the original file and what it looks like so i've actually upscaled this uh, if we go to image image size you can see i've upscaled it to 8k they start off in 2k um, i recommend doing them in 4k because uh, loading times can get really slow when they're at 8k depends what pc you have um, even sticking to 2k is good so what what, what i do th first is if we hide all these layers here so what I'll do is I will create a layer within the folder uh, if we hide this as well. So what I'll do is I'll create a layer within the folder, we'll name it test, and then we'll just get a bright color like green or something and fill the the uh, the whole thing in. Sorry, that's black, not green. So fill, fill the whole thing in like that. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask around the sections we want to paint. So I normally separate them up. So I make a folder for the wings um, or a separate folder for each wing, a folder for the fuselage and so on. Um, so as you can see, I've actually masked this out, um, which means whatever I put inside this folder will only apply to this green area. Now that we've now that we've added our mask, we can actually get rid of this test layer because it doesn't matter. So the first thing you're going to want to do once you have this is create your kind of base colors. So as you can see, the first base color is the gray here. 
Uh, it's kind of this grey here. And obviously these colours will be flat at first, but we can add weathering and damage and everything later to make it look more like this and more realistic. But just flat colours first. Um, and, and then you can see for the top halves of the fuselage, uh, bottom half, sorry, um, are this blue here. So if I hide these both again, you can see this bottom half here and this bottom half here. So once you've done that, you, you, have, you have the colours, which is fine. Um, now to do the body lines and rivets and stuff, you can either hide these completely or you can change the opacity of them. It, it depends what you prefer. So you can see for body lines, uh, you can see just trace over these lines. I recommend it depends what size your file is in, but I recommend a brush size of one, two, or three pixels. Three pixels is pretty good for 8K, two is pretty good for 4K, and one's probably good for 2K, and so on. So you you just trace around all these lines. Obviously, you would do the whole plane if you want it really detailed around here, everything like that. And then on for the rivets. Now rivets can be done in different ways. Um, the most realistic way, for my opinion, it, de it depends what country, um, because the Germans used flush riveting um, against their aircrafts. Older aircraft tend to use kind of the dome-shaped rivets, so it, it depends which rivets your aircraft has. Because Germans have flush riveting, um, what I like to do with the rivets is if we turn these flat colors back on you can see now They are just circle outlines. So the fl so it's just like the gaps in the rivets So all you have to do for, the, for this type of rivet is grab your circle tool draw draw a circle the size of your rivet you want don't fill it and just create the the stroke like this That's our rivet. Okay, so now mark you decrease the opacity to about 30% is what I find good. And now that you've made this one rivet, you can place it. So if we hide these layers again, you can place your rivet where the rivets are on the aircraft and then just alt copy this many, many times. Now, this is a long way, but it gets the best result. Uh, another way you can do rivets is a bit easier, um, but it doesn't look as good in my opinion. Is you can get a brush. Um, let's just use this brush size for instance, and you can get a black color always do black for the rivets because you always change the opacity to see what color they are you can either go one by one like this and do the rivets but that's it's it takes a short amount of time than this type of rivet but it still takes a long time so if you're using these just black circle rivets like this what you can do is you come up to your brush settings and change the spacing to about uh, it depends how far away they are but I think 200% to 300% normally works fine so if you can see, if we hold this, press shift and draw a line, you can see the rivets are like that. So you can mess around with the brush spacing, which, which is useful, which is useful. But you can see from my rivets, if we turn the background layers back on. So I've done quite a lot here. They're all in this one folder here. So there's 426 in this little area that I've copied along. So always, always bunch stuff up that together in folders and stuff just to keep it clean because I can unfold this to check all the rivets or I can fold it back up to keep everything clean. So you can also see under here we have this black bar which is where the exhaust will be so you just make a black black block here. So yeah that's how you do rivets and stuff. Now for, uh, in terms of weathering now let's go over stuff like this where it's like airbrushed. Now uh, there's, there's a few ways you can do this. Add a new layer that's type Let's call this airbrush, okay? So you can either you can get your brush, of course, um, and change the hardness down to zero. It, de it depends how soft you want the airbrush. So you can see it's kind of a soft glow. Um, what you can also do is you can change the flow. This will change how hard the brush is pressed, almost. So one, you can see it's more transparent, and the more you brush over it, the darker it gets. So that's kind of a good way to airbrush stuff. Um, change the flow and the hardness of the brush because if we have the hardness right up you can see let's change the flow as well um, you can see it's a lot more uh, artificial if that makes sense so that's how you do the sort of airbrush stuff also if you guys are using GIMP um, I don't know what any of the stuff is called on GIMP so I'm so sorry I can't help you with that um, but it should all be similar sort of things so as long as you know how to do these things then it should be should be pretty straightforward. And then for weathering, you're going to want to get yourself some brushes. I mean, this can be done freehand, but it's much easier if you have brushes to do the job. So I have these grunge brushes. As you can see, it's kind of like this dirt. So if we grab 
brownish color or something again we can just apply this onto the top um, at a very low opacity obviously don't use the same brush too many times because you will see a repeating pattern so it's kind of like that and you can just reduce the opacity to get different amounts of dirt and then what you can also do is we add a new layer to this uh, weathering 2 and grab a different brush and the brushes I like to use are the, the powder brushes they're pretty cool for detailing so you can add stuff like this maybe for the dirt and then just decrease it I mean you can do it in different colors as well to get different <laughs> different styles of the dirt and stuff um, and then in terms of exhaust smog and body line stuff uh, for the darkening uh, it's the same sort of thing again um, you don't even need to have a brush actually you can just go onto your body line layer go to the blending options and add an outer glow to these uh, let's create it like a, like a brown again and change the opacity up just so you can see what you're doing for the meantime so I mean that's like kind of darkening maybe around the body lines less less of this just just play around with it to get what you what you think is is needed so maybe we could have something like that with the opacity turned down um, if we go to our brown again you can see so you can do mess around with the outer glow that seems to work quite nice so that's how you do the weathering and stuff um, and as for labels um, if we get rid of all this weathering stuff right here get these background layers again now if I turn all this back on you can see that I've added the upscale of the words and everything now because it's in 8k the words are easy to read you can see it was originally here now you probably won't be able to read any of it on the plane which is why it's always good to have a reference image something like this now you can read this um, just obviously the more common the plane was at the time the more pictures they'll be online but yeah, just, just try and find as many reference images as you can because they're really, really helpful. Um, and here you can see the, what, what I mean about the rivets, flush riveting. Um, they kind of have this outline and then the paint's kind of on the top, so that's why they have the outline on that sort of stuff. Now, that's kind of the, the basics and everything you need to know to kind of get a realistic looking skin. Now, for the end files, uh, which are here, I mean, you can keep them like this if you don't want to change the shine of anything. Um, but if you do want to change the shine, then then green is kind of like a matte. So you can see the uh, down here, this is the tires. So green is like a mattish color. Uh, this this yellow is kind of like a semi shine. If we go to Wharf under here, you can see it's this shine that this 109 has right now. So that's the yellowish color. And then uh, pink is like chrome. So if I quickly show you this. Okay, so the shine is this purplish color. Uh, here's the hex code if you need it. And you can see it's, it's, it's like, a, like a chrome or a gold as you can see here. So it, it really depends what color you put beneath it. But pink is like really shiny. So that's, that's how you make kind of shiny stuff. Um, as I said, green is, is matte. Um, blue is also shiny, but it's like a, a different type of shine. Um, now, the end files are, they can be quite difficult. As long as you know the colors, you'll be fine. Um, so, for example, blue is also shiny. So, this is like on the sides of the plane. If I show you here, all this like me metallic kind of paint wear, that's blue. So blue is kind of like a metallic shine and then pink's like a chrome shine. And then green is matte. So that, that's kind of how the, the end files work. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to make a chrome plane, just paint the whole thing kind of, kind of pink, if that makes sense. Um, but all in all, I would normally leave these as they are uh, because the shine on the planes is, is pretty good anyway. But yeah, that is that is a, an in-depth tutorial on how you make War Thunder skins. Now, before we finish this video, uh, this is the BLK files. So, say I've made the skin for a 109F4, 
um, and we also want to make it uh, the K4 is not the same but we don't uh, so they want to make for the K4 as well we would drag all those F4 files into here delete these as well then we would get the BLK and we would do the same as what we did with the M files earlier we would change these to the names of those files and just change these um, as long as this is named appropriately so the 109 k b4 uh k4 blk um the game should recognize this blk and use that skin um but obviously if you are transferring skins between different planes make sure they are like really similar otherwise you will get kind of things in wrong places because the k4 is different to the, the f4 obviously but yeah that is how you make war thunder skins I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, I hope it helps a lot. Ask me anything in the comments and I'll try and help you guys out, but yeah. I thank you all for watching, don't forget to comment, like the video because that really helps us out, and subscribe because we're nearly at 1k, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.